Welcome to How to Play Piano Lessons, where you'll develop skills that will take you from a beginner to wherever you want to go as a pianist. The sky is really the limit. Hi, I'm Joanne, and it's a real privilege for me to be sharing this journey with you. We're going to be working through a step-by-step -step process that begins with you becoming comfortable with reading and playing written music, firstly with your right hand, and then with your left. Through the learning and practice of various music pieces that gradually become more complex, you will also gradually develop your technical and expressive skills and theoretical knowledge. Let's get ready to learn and play together. First, just check in with your posture. Make sure you've got a straight back and a straight long neck, relaxed shoulders, feet that are flat on the floor, forearms that are angled down towards the keyboard or level with the keyboard, and at the end of those forearms, you've got curved fingers, dome-shaped hands, and lovely relaxed wrists. Let's look at the names of the notes that are used in music. You only need to know the first seven letters of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. There is no H. The other thing that you need to notice on the keyboard itself is that we've got this pattern of black notes. We've got a group of three, followed by a group of two, another group of three, followed by another group of two, and so on it goes up and down the keyboard. If you have a look at the group of two black notes in the middle of the piano and focus on the one that's to the left, that's called middle C. And it's in the middle of the piano, funnily enough. That middle C note is a great navigation note because it gives you an idea of where you should place yourself on your piano stool so that that is right in the middle of your body. If we go down to the two black notes that are further down the keyboard, the note on the left is also a C. If we go further up the keyboard, I've got two black notes again, and the note on the left is also a C. So already we've found three Cs, and there's a few more as well. If you have a think about the alphabet, the letter that comes before C is a B, and so it follows that the key that's underneath the C, or next to the C, would be the B key, and it is. And it follows that the key next to that one would be an A key. So if we count up the alphabet from our A here, we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, there's no H, back to A, B, and we're at C again, which was one of the notes that we found before. So from this middle C note, you can locate and name all of the other white notes on the piano. Let's begin developing our right hand skills. We're going to focus on these notes initially, and we've already named them. They're C, D, E, F, and G. Let's have a look at how they would appear in written music. Musical notes are written on what's called a musical staff or a musical stave. And that's a series of five parallel straight lines and the four spaces in between. At the end of a musical staff, we have what's called a clef. And this one is a treble clef or a G clef. It tells us that the notes that we're going to be concentrating on are mostly those on this half of the piano and we're going to be playing them with the right hand. Composers of music can write notes on the line or in the space or above or below the lines and spaces. If we were having a look at the position of our five notes on the treble clef on the musical stave, they look like this. The middle C note is under the stave and has a little line through it. The D note is just tucked under the first line. The E is on the first line of the stave. The F is in the first space and the G sits on the second line. Challenge yourself to memorise the notes on the stave because we're aiming to learn to read and play music. This means you have to know them off by heart or automatically, just like you do your times tables. Perhaps use your favourite memorisation technique to learn every note. If you learnt one note every day, then in five days' time you'd have all these notes memorised. There are some wonderful apps available that you can download on your device that provide some terrific practice reading and locating notes on the piano when you're not actually sitting at the instrument. So let's play our five notes. Now in piano, our fingers are given numbers. Our thumb 
is the shortest finger, it's given the littlest number. It's number one, followed by two, middle finger's three, four, and little pinky is five. We're going to play our first five notes with our five fingers, beginning with our thumb on middle C and going all the way up to G. I'll have a go first and then it will be your turn. First of all, let's play them going up. Your turn. One, two, three, four, five. Me again. One, two, three, four, five. Your turn. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Make sure your hand is dome shaped, your fingers are curved, and you're pressing the keys down every time you want to play a note. I'll do it again, then your turn. Your turn. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Let's go down for a change. Excellent. Your turn. One, two, three, four, five. Me again. And now your turn. Good. Let's go up and down. Me first. Your turn. Da, de, da, 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 da. Okay, let's go down and go up. Your turn. Da, da, de, da, 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 da. Good. You need to have two things in music, a note to play or notes to play and a time to play them. We've located our five notes. Now let's work out when to play them. You might have noticed bar lines in written music. These are short lines drawn across the stave and they divide the music into equal parts, called bars or measures. Now our bars or measures have a number of beats in them. You might have heard band members counting in their group, a one and a two and a one, two, three, four. In written music, it's the time signature at the beginning of the music that tells us how many beats to count in each bar. The time signature is the two numbers at the start of a piece of music that sit on top of each other. It's the number on the top that lets us know how many beats to count in every bar. It could be a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, or whatever. So we know where our middle C note is located, and we know how many beats to count, but how long do we hold the notes down for? Now that depends on what the note looks like. In our first example, we have a round note that's not coloured in. It's a nice open note called a semi-brief note or a whole note, and that's held down for a count of four or for four beats. Let's play those semi-briefs. So I've got my treble clef, I'm counting four beats in a bar, I'm going to use my thumb to press down my middle C note, and every time I press my middle C note down, I'm going to hold it for a count of four. I'll go first, then it'll be your turn. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Your turn. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So use your finger one or your thumb to press the C key down to get a nice, smooth and even sound. I'll have another go. I might change the tempo. I might make it a bit more peppy. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Your turn. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you can vary the tempo at which you're counting. Your goal is to be able to automatically recognise this note as the middle C note or the middle C key on the piano, and to also recognise that when it's a semi-brief, you have to hold it down for a count of four. Let's go on to D. We're going to use finger two to play our semi-briefs. Me first, then you. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Your turn. One, two, three, four. 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 Good. Use finger two, work on pressing that D key down to get a smooth, even sound, and make sure you've got that dome-shaped hands and curved fingers. Let's vary the tempo. We might go a bit slower this time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Your turn. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now let's do E. We'll use our third finger. Let's play this together. Off we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. Make sure you're getting a nice, smooth, even sound. Let's play that together again. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Excellent. Let's have a look at F. We'll use finger four, press down our F, and we'll do it together. Off we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Lovely. And finally, we've got G. Use finger five or your little finger to press the G down, and we'll go together. Off we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There are semi briefs. But music doesn't only consist of semi briefs. That would not be very interesting to listen to. There are other notes like these called minims or half notes because they're worth half a semi brief. They look like a semi brief, they're a round open note, but they've got a stem. And these notes are only held for two beats. I'll do the middle C notes first and then you follow. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you can see I'm pressing my middle C note down with my thumb and I'm only holding the note down for a count of two. Let's do that together. Off we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Excellent. Now let's do D. We're going to use finger two and play D minims together. Let's go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Fabulous. Now on to E. Using finger three, let's play our minims together. Off we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now we're up to F. Finger four on F with our minims every two beats. Let's go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And finally, let's do G. Again, make sure your hand is dome shaped, your fingers are curved, and we're going to press our G down and play our minims together. Off we go. One, two, three, four. 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 Fantastic. Our last note today is called a crotchet note or a quarter note because it's only worth a quarter of a whole note. It looks a bit like a minim, except it's coloured in and it has a stem. Crotchets only last for one beat. So if we were going to play middle C crotchets, it would look like this. I'll play the crotchets first and then you have a go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Your turn. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. Let's play some crotchets that are on the D note. Off we go. Together. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Let's play some crotchets that are on the E note with our third finger together. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four. 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 Let's go up to F with our fourth finger and play those crotchets together again. Off we go. One, two. And 
lastly we've got G so we're going to press our G down with our little pinky finger using our curved fingers in our dome shaped hand and we're counting four beats in a bar we might make them a bit quicker this time me first and then you one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four your turn one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four fabulous practice playing your semi breves minims and crotchets on the notes from middle C to G for as long as you need to in order for this to become very familiar. Your goal is to be able to automatically recognize these right hand notes on the music stave as well as recognize their length which is shown by their shape. That's it for this lesson. Make sure that you feel completely comfortable with the skills that we've covered today before moving on. You might need to practice these little exercises a few times in order for your music reading and playing skills to be cemented into your brain and into your fingers. When I provide these exercises to my live students, this would be enough material to keep them busy for a few practice sessions, assuming that they practice them for about 10 minutes each time. Remember, don't be in a rush. Enjoy the journey and give your fingers and your brain all of the time that they need to process and develop these new skills. Next time, we'll play some tunes.